I want to jump <laughs> into. I want to jump in real quick to our quick fire questions. We ask folks to send mm-hmm. in questions to our uh, guest every week, specifically for Claire. This week we had a few come in, several come in actually. Carl, well, um, Carl from Santa Fe has the same question that I have. Uh, it, he specifically says five thirty eight has become my oracle. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you tell people like me? About, how do you warn them about? spending too much time on the 538 website. Yeah. <laughs> well, for health reasons, I think people should get right. more vitamin D. <laughs> um, you know, it's like I I struggle with how to communicate this to people because, you know, we want those clicks. But no, I think, listen, I, I don't think a lot of stuff is going to change in the next week. We're recording this on a Tuesday. Like, I'm, I'm not anticipating any craziness happening. So why torture yourself, you know? Um, and Keep I also, clicking, but not with stress. <laughs> Take a Xanax and click. <laughs> but also, I mean, I think it's, it's some of it's. Um, I realize that right now it's a lot of anxiety from from people who just want to see this election over with. Like, I think Democrat or Republican, a lot of Americans are just sick of this stuff, right? They want to get the election over with. Um, and so, I think you know, don't you can you can use us as you know your sort of mathematical predictors. But again, I also think that people should um, visualize what it would look like for their candidate not to win, because as we, you know, that that is a, re, you know, a possibility, and and that your mind should also be prepared for that eventuality. So, you, you know. said something last week on your podcast, I think, which yeah. was brilliant when people were asking about five thirty eight's role in this. And I think you said something to the effect of if you're looking for reassurance that Joe Biden will win, then listen to Pot Save America. (laughs) But if (laughs) Yeah, and I got in trouble for that on Twitter. Um, (laughs) But yeah, no, I mean, listen, I think it's, but actually, it's it's an interesting example, because I think with the rise of Pod Save America, and like I saw today that the the Lincoln Project is uh, just signed with like a a talent agency and is maybe going to do the kind of like centrist, right centrist version of Pod Save America, potentially. Like those are uh, media organizations, but they are partisan media organizations. We right. are we are journalistic, right? That's our that's our game here. We're here to give you facts. We're here to give you measured facts. <laughs> we're but we're Americans be- don't want facts unless they agree with what they. But yeah, and there's, and I think that there's an interesting, there's an interesting confusion on the left because a lot of, particularly like, let's say listeners to the 538 Politics podcast and Pod Save America might well tend to skew college educated and white, and therefore they're probably skew democratic liberal, right? And they want some, yeah. yeah, they want reassurance and they, because they listen maybe to these two politics podcasts, they maybe sometimes mush the two <laughs> the two right. together. And my my game is like, that's great. You should listen to that. That's totally fine. That's not my job. My job is not to make you, you Good. know, r- Good rah, for rah. You. <laughs> but and I that's do want I'm not trying to get you to predict anything no, here. But, yeah, but it's <laughs> yeah. but it is an it is an interesting, extremely 2020 uh conundrum. And I yeah. and I think, you know, there's a whole there's a whole probably interesting uh reflective podcast to be done with like Nate or whomever about you know, the actual effects that 538 has on people's political psyches. Well, they get pissed because you don't give them what. I mean, that's that's sort of what we expect from our news now. We expect it to reinforce the what we want it to reinforce. And I'm I, that's why I like 538, because I know you don't. So I appreciate that. Um, we got a whole bunch of good questions. Okay. And I usually only do three, but I want to try to get to a few more. Um, Kathy from Austin asked, is Joe Biden making Hillary's mistake by not campaigning in the right places? Um, I th- he's not doing Wisconsin and Michigan anymore, is he? He's down in uh, Georgia and Florida and Iowa, correct? Yeah, I think Biden. F- it's it's a different election because of COVID, so he's certainly just <laughs> just been around less. Right. But frankly, he's doing better in those you know better in those states, and I know that that kind of triggers a lot of people's <laughs> 2016 acid reflux when we talk about Wisconsin and why isn't he campaigning there enough or something, but. I do think um, that their That's team not why prob- Hillary lost, so I'm not going to get triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think they feel better um, about their standing in the state, and I would guess that they have some internal numbers that probably show pretty rosy. This is me totally speaking right. off the cuff, but showing some things that that are maybe rosier internal favorabilities for Biden versus Clinton, and that probably has lots of stuff to do with the fact that he's a 
sort of predictable older white male moderate politician. Right. And Clinton was the first woman. Isla or Isla, Isla, sorry, Isla from San Francisco asks, um, does voter registration have an effect on the vote? As I hear GOP have larger registrations than Dems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw this question coming up kind of a week ago and this was being reported out. What I would say to that is there's lots of interest from both parties here, but some of those GOP registration numbers could be a little bit misleading because the Democrats saw a lot of registrations in 2018. And also remember, they had a contested Democratic primary. So there would have been people registering to vote for that. Right. So there might be just some Demo some Republicans who are kind of coming off the bench and saying, I got to register to vote. So so it's interesting. And it's, it, it certainly indicates the enthusiasm that everyone has for this election. But I wouldn't read too much into it. Hey, I'm Clay Aiken. To hear the full episode, subscribe to this Politicon podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to pods. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to Politicon.com, follow at Politicon on social media, and listen to a new pod episode of How the Heck every Thursday.